Hey, good morning, everybody. We are looking at the shape of a graph today. So we've spent the last couple of days looking at the first derivative to figure out where a function is increasing and decreasing. Today, we're going to focus on the second derivative and look at something called concavity. So what I have for you at the beginning are these three pictures, um, each showing concave up, concave down, and an inflection point. So in this first figure, we are concave down in this region and concave upward. And where those two things switch is called the inflection point. Now, these make nice kind of full U circles, but they don't have to, they can be kind of partial. So the next one is concave up, we reach the inflection point and then concave down. This is concave up, increasing, reach the inflection point, concave down. So they can look differently, even though these all start as concave up, hit the inflection point and then concave down. If we look at those pieces a little bit differently, um, actually, let me back up here. The first question I have for you in Delta Math is asking you to identify where an inflection point occurs, and you're going to drag a little yellow dot to figure out where it switches concavity. F is concave up on an interval if its tangent lines have increasing slope. That's what you're going to use that yellow dot to find. When you have increasing slope, your concave up, that increasing first derivative. If you have decreasing slope, then it is concave down. Now, not increasing function, but increasing slope. So if I look at this picture on the end, my slope starts out kind of flat and then it gets steeper, steeper, steeper. That's increasing slope. Then my slope starts to decrease. So the function itself is increasing everywhere. However, my slope is decreasing. So it's a little bit tricky. I only give you one of those questions to try. This next figure, if we were in my classroom, would be on a big yellow poster in the front of the room. Um, these are the different scenarios with increasing and decreasing and concave up and concave down. This one is concave up, but decreasing. This one is concave up, but increasing. Over here, we have concave down and decreasing. And then I have concave down and increasing. So these are both increasing functions. These are both decreasing. The two across the top are both concave up. The two across the bottom are concave down. So what does it mean for you? Pretty straightforward. If your second derivative is positive, your function is concave up. If your second derivative is negative, your function is concave down. So example one. Is the following function concave up or concave down on the interval from negative infinity to infinity? Here's the truth. You can solve this without doing any calculus because you already know about this function. It's an x squared function, so that means it's a parabola. It's a positive x squared, so that means that it's concave up. You know that already. I just want to show you the calculus to prove it. So we need the second derivative, but in order to get the second derivative, you need the first derivative. So f prime of x is equal to 2x minus 4. Now we spent the last couple of days setting this equal to 0 and getting the um, critical points. Don't need to do that yet. We'll put all that together in a few minutes. The second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. So the second derivative is 2. Now, is 2 positive or is 2 negative? Well, 2 is positive. Therefore, we are concave up everywhere or concave up from negative infinity to infinity. Concave up. Easy peasy. What else can this look like? Again, another picture with inflection points. I just want you to have some different visuals. We are concave up here and concave up over here on the right. We are concave down here, and also concave down here. And where those things switch is your inflection point. That's the inflection point. It has to be a point on the graph where that concavity changes. Critical points are first derivative, inflection points are second derivative. So let's look at the next one. Find the inflection point for the following function and determine or that intervals, and determine the intervals where f of x is concave up and concave down. Um, this might have more than one inflection point, but we'll see here in a second. 
So we need the second derivative for inflection points, but to get there, he needs the first derivative. So f prime of x is equal to 15x cubed minus, nope, how about to the fourth? Twenty x cubed. The derivative of one is zero. The second derivative becomes sixty x cubed minus sixty x squared. Kind of a coincidence that they both wind up to be sixty. Now to find the inflection points, we set this equal to zero. I can factor out a sixty x squared. I have an x minus one. So what are my solutions for the inflection point? x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1. The 0 comes from here, the 1 comes from over here. That 0 is a double root. We're going to check that out on the number line. So to figure out where we're concave up and concave down, you want to put your values on a number line, 0 to 1. And instead of using the first derivative like we did with critical points, we're going to use the second derivative. So we're popping these values into the second derivative. So if I choose a value less than zero, say negative two, and I kind of like the factored version. If I put a negative two into the factored version, this piece in the beginning is positive. This piece over here is negative. So overall, we have a negative. If I choose a value between zero and one, say one half, one half squared is positive. One half minus one is negative. So this value, also negative. I know that they alternate most of the time, but this is a double root, so they're not going to alternate. That's okay. And then finally, if I choose a number val value larger than one, say two, I put two into my second derivative. Again, I like the factored version. This is a positive, this is also positive, so my value at the end is positive. So how do I represent the answer? We are concave up, we are concave up between one and infinity, and I use a parenthesis, I don't include the one, it's an open interval, or concave down between negative infinity and zero. I'm going to stop at zero because I don't know what's happening there. It's not concave up or concave down. And then zero to one again. I'm using open intervals, parentheses, not brackets, because it's not concave up or down at zero and one, so we don't include those values. But there we go, that's where we're concave up and concave down. Now I've got one more question here for you. This is putting it all together. Where is the following function increasing? Where is it decreasing? Where is it concave up? Where is it concave down? Where are the critical points? Where are the inflection points? check your answers with your graphing calculator. So this puts together everything that we've done over the last few days. It can feel a little overwhelming, but it's really not. You just take, take it one step at a time. So the first thing we do is everything having to do with the first derivative. And first derivative is critical points. So what I'm going to do is find the first derivative, f prime of x is 3x squared minus 6x. Then I'm going to set that first derivative equal to 0. This is how you find your critical points. Find critical points. My uh, iPad handwriting is not the best here with my purple stylus. Then you're going to factor out a 3x, and so I've got x minus 2. So what are my solutions? x equals 0 is a solution for right here. x equals 2 is my second solution. So these are my critical points. Now you'll find that we'll find these answers, but not necessarily in order. So critical points. Done. Got them. And then we have to figure out, okay, where are we increasing? Where are we decreasing? So let's do that. This is where we did the number line. So zero and two. We're going to put those into the first derivative and we want to know increasing, decreasing. So if I choose a value less than zero, say negative one, again, I kind of like it in the factored version, this version right here. If I choose a negative one, this would be a negative times a negative, 
which makes that positive. If I choose a value between zero and two, say one, and if I put a one in here, this is positive, and one over here is negative, so when I multiply those, I get a negative. And if I choose a value larger than two, say three, this is a positive, this is a positive, and a positive times a positive, a positive. So we can say that we are increasing between negative infinity and zero, and two to infinity, and we are decreasing between zero and two. Now, and add a little bonus here. I didn't specifically ask for it, but it's kind of a nice little, little add-on. You can tell me max and min. Where I switch from increasing to decreasing is a maximum x equals zero is a max. And where we switch from decreasing to increasing, that's a minimum. There we go, added little bonus, good job. Now back up here on my list, that's everything in the first derivative. Now we need to talk about inflection points and all of that comes from the second derivative. I'm gonna switch colors here. Let's go green. So my second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative, which will be 6x minus 6. From there, we want to set it equal to 0. And this is not to find critical points. These are to find inflection points. Be a good algebra student and factor out of six. And we set this equal to zero, so x is equal to one. This is your inflection point. If I come back up here. We said inflection point done. So what's left? Concave up and concave down. So these go on a number line. This time we don't use the first derivative, we use the second derivative. And usually when we're in class, I tell students if they're doing okay on the first derivative, the second part is just an extension of that. But being as we haven't seen each other face to face and I haven't been able to guide you back on track um, in real time, if you're struggling, if you're struggling, it's not just you, it's most of the class. Um, send me a note, send me a note, send me an email, send me a Google Doc and I can help you out. I haven't heard much from a lot of you. If I take a number less than one, which is zero, and I put that into, again, I like the factored version, zero minus one is a negative one, that makes this a negative value. If I choose a number larger than one, say two, and I put two in here, this is a positive value. So we are concave up from one to infinity, and you're concave down between negative infinity and one. Awesome. So check your answers with your graphing calculator. What you can do is pop this into your graphing calculator. Desmos also works very, very nicely. I just don't have split screen going on at the moment here. My kids are better at split screen than I am. Y equals, I forget what our graph was, hold on. y equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1. All right, there we go. There's a nice little picture of it. So just so that you can see, we're increasing to the left between, oh, here we go. We're increasing to the left between negative infinity and zero. We're decreasing between zero and two, 
and you're increasing between two and infinity again. The other thing that this marked was your x-intercepts. Those are not the inflection points, but those are the x-intercepts. The inflection point we said happened at one, which is right in here. Do I label that? It doesn't want to stay on. Ah, oh, there we go. So there's our inflection point, one, negative one. And I can't hold my finger still. So we're concave down between negative infinity and one, and then it switches to concave up between one and infinity. So you can do this with lots of functions. You can do it with trig functions. I'm gonna to try to keep it to straightforward polynomials just to make our lives a little bit easier. So try the Desmos problems for me. Do the best you can and let me know if you get stuck. And don't forget to watch those helpful videos in there. I know they're not always an exact match, but it's at least something to help you out.